welcome welcome to this brand coaching session um this one is absolutely fantastic in that it's social media and i think this applies more to the mass that, oh, the doorbell keeps ringing hello everybody <laughs> um yeah so this is the social media brand coaching session and um so this one will apply to most of you and i really appreciate those especially turning up who um, lead the social media in your own church or ministry or area of expertise so thank you for that um, this will be really helpful because there are going to be some brand essentials that actually may require you to change your existing um, things but at the same time it's not um, it's not something that um, you need to struggle with we're here to support and to help you um, Get your questions ready, especially in those areas of um, social media. Um, feel free, if you've just got a general branding um, question, feel free to ask that as well, because this is your platform to keep asking those questions to help the rollout. Um, it's been an exciting season, actually, because um, I'm going to introduce you to um, Anita. And Anita is part of Toronto here. And... Um, Anita is very much um, in the hands and the throes of um, social media for Catch the Fire World. Um, and just generally, she has a passion for it. She does it personally and something that she's just grown her tips and tricks and expertise over the years. So a real passion for it. So it'll be great for her to talk us through and to coach us through um, some of the slides that she has and also something that we adopt as Catch the Fire as part of the brand and also for something that you can um, actually connect to and apply for yourself. Um, and just a reminder, ctfbrand.com is your go-to when it comes to anything of any brand essentials, any brand inspiration. So, you know, when it's an essential, it means we'd really love you to follow that. When it's inspiration, you know what? You can look and observe, but you don't need to take it on. Um, and so, you know, there are some things, especially the handle and the names that um, there's still inconsistencies across Catch the Fire. So we just want to bring alignment really in line with the brand. Um, and it just clears up the noise, clears up the clutter, clears up things that actually just prevent continuity. Um, and integrity of the brand. Um, and so just to give you a heads up, um, I'm currently going through like a brand audit with each church, um, just to check how you're doing with, with the actual brand rollout. And I'll talk with you, I'll chat with you, and um, especially the communications team really, because you're probably the ones that actually do the hands-on um, and just look at ways in which I can support you to continue rolling out the brand if you haven't done so already. Um, so yes, welcome, welcome to this session. And we, um, yeah, I'll hand it over to you now, Anita. Thank you so much. Hi, can everyone hear me? Can I get a nod? Okay, yes. So hi everyone, I'm Anita. I um, work here in Toronto and I do the world of social media accounts um, and I'm part of helping with their campaigns for the Toronto ones. So I'm really excited to talk about this because um, I've been passionate about social media for a really long time and I love being able to use it for the church. Um, so in this session today, let's see if this is gonna work for me. We're going to go over um, why is social media important enough that we are actually including it in the brand guide. Because um, if you think about it, everything else that we've talked about, like topography, color, language, um, these are more like building blocks where social media is one of the few channels that's actually made it onto the brand guide. Um, and then we're going to go with brand, over, brand essentials, which is the stuff that you have to follow. We'll talk about that in detail. The inspiration. So I'll talk about how I come up with posts, ideas for you, brand culture. We'll talk about language and some resources for you guys. So um, I, as someone who runs the world account, I take a look at all of the, all of the other Catch the Fire accounts. So I know that we have a full spectrum of churches that have like one post and, and then we've got others 
churches that have like, you know, you've got a team and you're doing like three to five posts a week. Um, but I want to take a moment and just talk about why social media is so important that we're actually including it. If you look at the numbers, there's 1 billion users on Instagram, 2.4 on Facebook. And the number of people who have mobile phones is expected to pass 5 billion this year, which means that um, if you think about the history of humanity, even Jesus didn't quite have access to this when he was alive. Like there has never been a time when you could publish something in a few minutes that's accessible and visible to 5 million people from a device that they carry with them on their person all the time. So to me, this represents a huge opportunity for us as the church to really amplify the message and um, offer people what they're looking for. So social media allows us to really connect with people who might not otherwise be invited to church. Um, I actually know lots of people who've like never been to a church and one of the first things they'll do when they're like exploring it is they'll go and look it up on Instagram or Facebook. It also allows us just to spread what we're doing here um, at Catch the Fire, like what we've got is so unique and um, so important to the Christian community that to me it's like a great opportunity for us to like show the world who we are and also offer that to the rest of the Christian community as well. And then we definitely want to share as a Catch the Fire church and as a part of this ministry, you've got access to more resources than a small church. You've got access to music, books, conferences. As a ministry, we're just doing more. So even if you're a small church thousands of miles from Toronto, you can still tap into everything that um, we create and that we offer. So you don't have to feel like you need to reinvent the wheel that um, like we're here to help and that's what this session is also about. So our church has a global and a local impact. So here in this, if you're sitting here today and you're listening to this, whether right now live or after, know that you are an ambassador of Catch the Fire and what you say online matters because frankly you are part of a much larger network. So now let's go over some brand essentials. These are the things that are core to the brand that we highly recommend that you follow to the T. Um, and just a heads up, some of the stuff is going to be new to you because um, the team here has been in the process, ironing out uh, what we want to settle on. So um, I will be pulling some examples from churches. If you're one that I've pulled out, please don't feel like I'm trying to pick you out it's more just to show an example because even in Toronto we we have things that we have to correct from time to time okay so the first big brand essential that you want to pay attention to is naming convention for local accounts this is your Facebook or your Instagram profile um, specifically for your church and most people are already following this but if you aren't pay close attention um, and also, before I get into it, Facebook and Instagram are what we're specifically covering today. There are obviously other social media accounts like Pinterest, Twitter, Google+, um, even YouTube kind of. Um, but for our purposes today, we're going to focus on these two since our demographic uh, is mostly on these ones. So for Facebook, make sure your profile name is Catch the Fire and your location and that your handle is CTF and the location. Um, this is something that not all churches follow right now. And in the past, we didn't have a strict policy on it. Everyone just kind of did their own thing. So make note of if your church actually doesn't have this right now. And then for Instagram, you want to make sure that your handle is CTF location again, and then your title, the name in your profile is catch the fire and your location. So I'm going to show you some examples. Um, after this, but let's get into extensions first. This is if your church is at a size where you have the ability to maintain and sustain uh, more social media accounts to provide a more personal connection for specific ministries or communities. Um, so this is like if you've got a youth ministry or you've got a worship team that's really creative and they want to have their own account, or you've got a women's ministry, anything like that, um, where there's people that have expressed that they are ready to take on a whole account because as I'll talk about later, it's not a simple thing. You wanna make sure you do it well. So definitely make sure you've got a team and people that are prepared to put in 
hours every week, but um, even if they don't do it every week, it's, it's definitely going to take them at least like a dozen hours every month. So for these, uh, it follows a similar format in that you want to make sure you've got catch the fire location and then the ministry and the handle is CTF location and ministry and with Instagram you've got CTF location and ministry and then your title is the same. Uh, but you've got to make sure you put the whole catch the fire. So let me, okay, I'll do profile info and then we'll talk about why this is important. So for your profile info, um, again, listen carefully to this stuff um, because you wanna make sure that you're using the logo image as your profile image. This means the actual catch the fire flame. You don't want text, you just want the logo. You also have the option to use the logo with a brand colors as a background um, or a photo representing your location. I'll show you some examples in a second, but the most important thing is basically your logo image has, or your profile image has to have the logo. So you don't need the name and you also don't want the picture of your lead pastors or you don't want a picture of your building, you want the logo. So for your biography, and this goes for um, Instagram and Facebook, make sure that you write out the most important information, including our brand tagline, encounter God's transforming presence, meeting times, location, and a website link. I know for some of you guys, this might seem basic, but I'm gonna show you um, some examples to just to show you how we, this is important because uh, we wanna make sure that there's unity across all Catch the Fire accounts. Can I just interject, just to let you all know, um, this video will be going on ctfbrand.com um, possibly next week or the week after, just so then you can actually relook at it and go through the wonderful detail. Yes. Uh, okay, so, all right, so now I'm going to walk you through some examples and just some things um, that we've noticed. Don't feel like if you run one of these accounts, you don't need to go and fix it right now, but just um, it'll help you see what we're going for as a ministry. So you want to change your handle so that it's got the CTF. There are some accounts that um, in the past have used Catch the Fire and we'd like you to change it over to CTF and your location. This is a new thing, so if you didn't know this before, that's okay. Um, just be aware that we wanna to move towards this. And then for your actual bio, here's some examples of churches that um, have written up their bio. We totally welcome you to put in your personality um, what, uh, in these bios, but make sure that it's still clear that it's a church. So, so for example, things like DFW, um, we don't want shortened locations. Try to stick with our format, which is catch the fire and then the name of your location. Um, keep in mind that um, we actually want to lead people to the larger catch the fire ministry. So even if um, they go to catch the fire Mississauga, we'd like them to also discover catch the fire as a whole and know that they're part of something bigger. So here, this first example from Novo Hamburgo, this is an example of um, a church that's done it all correctly according to brand. They've got their logo in the corner and they've got their handle here that's CTF. Um, and they've got a banner here that represents Catch the Fire. For this one, I just want to show you guys this. This is what, I'm, this is what we mean by the Facebook handle. Um, this, is something in the settings that you'll want to get your social media person to help you uh, dig into. Um, so this would need to be changed to CTF from now on. So here are some more examples of things you want to watch out for. So something like this, we want to change to the logo uh, at this Catch the Fire Reykjavik. And then same thing with the username, this needs to be CTF Reykjavik. And then for Catch the Fire Ottawa, Notice this is not our Nort font. So um, this is a definite, we don't want things like this. So um, just things to be aware of. But this, what you see here with Catch the Fire Reykjavik, where they've got the location in the background and the logo on front, this is awesome. So there's definitely space for you to express your creativity or for your social media team to express their creativity, but you wanna stay within, um, stay within the parameters that we set, which there, there's a small number of parameters actually because I'm going to talk a lot about brand inspiration next. Um, 
but definitely things like this. You want to make sure you stick with our logos and, uh, and have your team make sure they're using our logo set. Okay, so now let's move to brand inspiration. So this is content that is a suggestion and it has some creative flexibility. So you can ignore this, but I've packed this, sec this section out so that hopefully it'll give you lots of ideas that you can then give to your team members or yourself to come up with lots of posts. So how do you know what to post? If you're a church that um, you managed to create an account, but you've got five posts and you don't know how, how to do this thing, I'm going to load you up with resources and tips in this section. So consider what would someone want to know before coming to a Catch the Fire church for a first time? Think of you can actually brainstorm what you would actually want to, what someone would want to know. So I have done that for you. So here's an example of, this is just me doing a brain dump of tons of ideas of just like what you could do for posts, what people would be curious about. So even just from this, um, like I could take every single one of these and turn this into three different posts, which would easily give me enough posts for two to three months. So, um, when you're starting out, it can be really overwhelming. It's like, oh, you can post everything, but you don't know what to post or where to start. I'm going to give you some ideas for how to structure all of this to make it easier for yourself. So how to not be overwhelmed. Um, I really wanted to include this because I understand that social media um, does not come naturally to everyone, but there are definitely people in your church who are curious about it and they might even be like really passionate about it and want to help a lot. So the, the first thing I recommend is definitely get help on this. Um, even if you are younger and you're totally capable of doing it on your own, um, it's just so helpful to have help because social media is a long-term thing. It's not just we promote an event for this weekend and then it's over. It's something that is ongoing, um, and it, it just works best when there's someone who's passionate about it as well, because it can be a lot of work. Uh, the next thing to help you out is know that you can repost and share any of the Catch the Fire posts. So specifically the world stuff um, on, on the official Catch the Fire pages, um, that has all been vetted and is like definitely going to reflect our brand and our ministry. However, you can also even repost stuff from other churches. Um, there's no harm in like cross-promoting our community. Like if you're a church in the UK and there's four other churches, you know, within a couple of hours driving distance, you can definitely share things and cross-promote each other. This is actually a great way to um, build your online and your in-person community. Um, so if you've never heard of the Repost app, this is something that you can download onto your phone and check out. You can also do something as simple as screenshotting pictures and then reposting them on Instagram. Um, this is like, these are instant hacks that will give you dozens more posts every month. And then you can also go onto the Catch the Fire blog. Um, for those who don't know, we've been publishing blogs on catchthefire.com for a couple of months. And again, these are, this is all content that's been vetted to reflect our brand and our values and our vision. So you can grab quotes from any of this stuff. And actually, if you look at Catch the Fire Instagram, there's lots of tags to, to, um, to blog posts. So, and when it comes to actually posting, a great thing to do or to have your social media person do is to schedule posts. And that means going on uh, these are all, so Loomly, Buffer, Later, Planoli, and Hootsuite, these are all social media scheduling tool, tools um, that, again, I would recommend you give this to a social media person to check out, um, have them pick one. Some of them are free or have free tiers, and then they get into paid ones, um, but there's definitely lots of help out there for you, so you're not feeling like you need to post, you know, every day and being overwhelmed with it. Okay, so a quick tip um, to help your post be more effective is to always end each post by directing people to something. So it could be your website, it could be catchthefire.com or another way to get information such as asking people to email you or to send you a, a DM or a private message on Facebook or to comment below. Um, 
you always want to think of call to actions, even if you don't do it every post, I recommend you do it like every other post. Um, this is also a great way to know that your posts are actually working. Okay, so before I get into photos and graphics, I want to take you over to, let me see. I'm going to take you over to the website just to connect you to some resources that are right here for you. So if you go to this component section and you go to social media, down here, this is what, these are the examples of account avatars that you want to have. So this goes for the actual profile image on your Instagram and Facebook. Um, and if you have other accounts that your church maintains, like YouTube or Twitter, just pull one of these as well. And then there are assets right here. If you've never downloaded them before, this is, now you know, um, these will help you out as well. And then, all right, uh, I'm gonna talk about language more later, but I just wanna direct you to this so that you know it's here. Um, when it comes to language, we've got tons of tips and advice here. And we highly re recommend, if you haven't read all of this stuff yet, read all of it. Um, this goes for general marketing materials, anything, websites, anything that your church creates. Um, but right, but, and obviously it applies to social media as well. So definitely if you've never read through all of this, because it just looks like a lot of text, I encourage you to read it because when it comes to social media, you're going to be writing a lot uh, and it's good to know um, that you're pulling from the right place. Okay, now I'm gonna come back to these slides. Oh, I see a question. Okay, it's about t-shirts, we'll come back to that. Okay, so some help for photos. This can be something that, um, I'll just speak from experience, from, that can be really overwhelming for social media um, because you do want to have good photos. Um, and if you always have really fuzzy pixelated photos from a cell phone, um, as your church grows, it just starts to look uh, unprofessional. So what do we do about this? So one of the best things you can do is ask for volunteer photographers and just start planting seeds. And if you don't have any photographers in your church, start planting seeds to build a media team. There's usually a mom in there, I just usually feels like it's a mom that wants photos. Um, so someone that's like camera happy that can take pictures when you've got fellowship, when you've got speakers, um, which brings me to lighting. Your photos from your cell phone actually are perfectly fine for social media as long as they are clear and crisp so like super simple tip is if you're using a cell phone you always want to tap the screen before you take a picture to focus it um, and that can be great I have actually I know that um, Catch the Fire Novo Hamburgo does a lot of cell phone pictures I can tell because they're a tiny bit grainy but they're still good enough and they're also balanced out by high quality photos from a DSLR you also have the option for stock photos so if you haven't heard of these websites, make note of them. Um, Unsplash, Canva, and Pixabay are places that you can get photos for free. So if you've got a conference coming up um, or a barbecue and you don't have nice pictures of a barbecue, you can just go on one of these websites to post. So one of the best ways to get regular inspiration um, without trying to get inspiration is make sure that your church is following um, these accounts. These are just the ones that I've identified that are doing a really great job um, of posting regularly and posting things that are on brand and that are inspiring. Just note that Catch the Fire Kitchener will probably change their handle to CTF Kitchener soon. Okay, so I want to check on the time here. Okay, I'm going to go into something for the next five minutes that is a little bit more of an advanced thing um, but I do know that there are some people here who run social media and even if you don't run social media this is good for you to know because um, this is how you can help your social media person out and make sure that what you want uh, make sure that they're doing the most effective thing for your church 
So if this feels overwhelming and it goes way over your head, just stay with us for five minutes and then we'll keep going. And again, this is a brand inspiration. You don't have to do this, but I thought it'd be great to kind of lift the hood behind what I do for Catch the Fire World um, so that you can see that there's, um, there's definitely synergies and things that you can grab from this that will make your life easier. So when it comes to social media strategy, you wanna think in buckets of content. What are the categories of ty or types of content? So I like to break it up into four different sections. There's inspiration, education, community, and general catch the fire values or catch the fire essence. And in each of these, these are designed to make sure that you don't miss anything. So what does this actually look like when you put it into practice? This is what it would look like for Catch the Fire world. When it comes to inspiration, I could do, um, this is about like what would make people smile, what would basically make people feel inspired or empowered. So these are some ideas that I would do for the inspiration bucket. Education is about what I would actually teach people. So I can go over how you can get involved, encountering God. Um, and again, with each, with each of these buckets, you can brainstorm like 10, 20 ideas. And um, all the stuff that seems almost normal to you as a, a member of Catch the Fire, remember that there are people out there, especially online, who have never heard of Catch the Fire. Maybe they've never even gone to church and we're basically introducing them to Catch the Fire. Um, then in the community bucket, this is where you can highlight members of your community or you can cross promote other ministries. There's just, there's always an element I like to do in social media of like connecting with people. And then anything that's like catch the fire-esque or that reflects our essence, presence, and counter transformation, there's a lot of freedom in each of these categories. Um, but it will just help you mentally compartmentalize different types of posts to make sure that um, you're not missing anything. Like you don't want to just have an account that just does Bible verses and just does quotes from Sunday. That, that's okay because there are accounts that just do Bible verses and Sunday messages, but we want to make sure we also hit the people that like maybe haven't been to church and they have no idea what encounter God means. Um, so this is the purpose of having these categories. So how does this actually help you post? Um, Remember earlier I had the slide with like just tons of ideas for posts. This is an example of how you use it. You can put one category into every day so that on Sundays you do inspiration, Mondays community, Tuesday education, Wednesday CTF values. And then you essentially just pick a post from each type of category. So, and then you do the same for the rest of the week. So if you um, make a practice of using the scheduling tool, which I do recommend in the long term, um, especially if you've got people who are like very passionate about social media is you you'll have a calendar that ends up looking like it's color coded. Um, and this is what our social media calendars in Toronto look like. They're color coded based on the types of posts that we're doing for each day. Um, and this is how we know that we're hitting everything. Like we've got a nice chunk of testimonies. We've got some of Duncan Smith talking about vision. We've got some about the ministries in the church. This way we don't miss anything. Oh, and a quick note about um, how often to post. Don't worry about posting every day. Um, you can do that if you really like. Um, but we'd recommend two to five times per week is great for Instagram or Facebook. Obviously, the more that you post, the more that you're actually able to, to tell people about your church. Okay, so now let's talk about brand culture. This is about the brand experience, so how people experience experience Catch the Fire as a whole. So this is when we get into language and when it comes to social media you really want to think about who are you speaking to and I find that um, when people are starting out on social media uh, this is this is the piece that that is easily missed right we just assume that people know everything but especially with social media think of it like the equivalent of sending a member of your church into the streets just to do street ministry and tell people about Catch the Fire. So there are people who are going to stumble upon this person on the street and they're gonna know nothing about Catch the Fire. For them, we wanna make sure we tell them the basics of who we are. And then there'll be people who are intrigued and maybe like, oh, I've been looking for a church for a while. Oh, but I haven't heard of Catch the Fire. What are you about? And we wanna tell them enough information that they'd be comfortable coming 
potentially alone um, and that they could find their way to your church. Like super simple things like, you know, which service to come to if you're new, um, uh, how, like where to park, things like that. And then our third and secondary audience is the existing church. So this is people who already attend Catch the Fire and we wanna keep them updated with what's going on and just keep them inspired. So most people I find when they're just starting out, we, we feel like, oh yeah, of course, I'm writing to the existing church, people who already attend Catch the Fire. But when it comes to the online space, you wanna actually use this opportunity to reach the unreached and intrigued people. So people who have no idea who you are and they might just stumble on your account online. This is actually the benefit of doing social media. Um, in the past, like it might've taken 20 people to try to reach a neighborhood. Now, if you do social media well, you can have one person on their phone taking your Sunday service to thousands of people across your city. So when it comes to your tone of voice, um, we really welcome you to just be friendly, be human. Don't feel like you have to be overly professional. However, still, be clear on what's catch the fire's voice, what's your professional voice versus what's too personal. So if you need tips, go and follow catch the fire and ctftoronto.com and CTF London and just read their posts and see how they talk. Um, so a big thing too with social media is avoid using Christ too many Christian words. Um, things like intercession and prophetic doesn't mean you can't use them, but like if someone is not even a Christian, they're going to have no idea what prophetic is. So every once in a while, maybe you want to explain what prophetic is. Um, this is something here in Toronto we always try to be aware of and just name things in a way that are easy for people to understand. And if you've got to use a really Christian-y name, then have your first sentence explain what it is. This is one of the ways that we as a church and a ministry can be really approachable for the world um, and not be strung up Christians. <laughs> okay, uh, so here's an example from Catch the Fire Toronto um, that gives you a good example of like, it's, it's not overly like uh, Christianese. It just says, do you have a passion for seeing women thrive? God has a unique blessing on women and we love nurturing your gifts. Be a part of our community, women's community, which meets every month. So it's very like explanatory and invitational. Um, and even if you weren't Christian, like you might be interested in something where you're going to have a morning to get refreshed, hear some bold talks, brave conversations, and receive great ministry. So someone might not know what ministry is, but hopefully if they scroll through your feed, they'll get an idea of what ministry is. So with social media, we're kind of giving them like bits and pieces of the experience of church. Um, ultimately to invite them to come and attend a service. So here's uh, an idea for you um, when you're trying to come up with brand, uh, what kind of posts you want to do. So I'm giving you lots of ideas, but I'll give you some more. This is another way that you can come up with more ideas for posts. So if on ctfbrand.com, when you scroll down here, you're going to see this giant bucket of words. So if you even wanted, you could use these as your categories and group all of your posts. Like make sure you're once a week talking about building, once a week talking about um, pursuing the presence. So one thing you can do is try to weave in as many of these words into your post as possible. So Presence is obviously a big part of who we are. If you find that you're talking a lot about um, missions, which is great, but maybe you wanna spend a month then doing more posts about presence and Holy Spirit. Um, and things like raising leaders. If you're talking a lot about worship, maybe you want to take um, a couple weeks and write up some posts that talk more about raising leaders and opportunities in your church to develop leaders. So this is how you can make sure that your Catch the Fire social media accounts are aligned with our overall brand. Um, this is really important because this is, how, um, this is how we develop our brand identity and this is how we stand out 
from other churches and and also just share the the mantle and the mandate that Scott that God has given us okay I see some questions I think I've just got a few more things for you and then we'll answer If you have um, someone helping you with social media too, I highly recommend them. Recommend that you you just send them this presentation. It'll be on ctfbrand.com, um, and it'll give them a lot of guidance. So you don't have to feel like you need to train your Catch the Fire volunteers either. All right. So how to get started? How can you take your account to the next level? Um, let's talk about some steps you could take. The first thing I highly recommend again is to ask for help. I don't think that any church, um, especially smaller churches, I don't think, personally, I don't think a pastor should be doing this. You can, but I know that it's a lot of work to do it well, but it can be very rewarding. Um, and it's something that there's definitely people in your church that would be interested in doing. The next thing to do is to set up your profile. If you haven't, um, now that you know the new guidelines, you'll want to refine your profile and your bio. And then the next step is to basically create a lot of content and create it consistently. So this is gathering photos, writing posts, planning and mapping content out will help you a lot. It's actually over time, it's exhausting to think of posts like three times a week. It's much easier in the long run to do it, you know, once or twice a month and then not have to worry about it for the rest of the month. Um, and then just do things spontaneously when you feel like it, but not have to have the pressure of needing to do it all the time. And then the last thing is to just connect with the community just like you would in person. Uh, you can engage with people in comments, ask questions, and know that you're reaching real people. I know that online sometimes I can just feel like things are going into the abyss, um, but know that every single like and comment and view is a real person. Uh, and you never know how your piece of content is going to help bring them to church. So finally, some resources for you. Um, I'm going to be sharing some branded quote cards and um, other posts that I've made on the Catch the Fire accounts. Those will be available for you on CTF brand shortly after this presentation. Um, and that's there for you if you're starting out. You can do like 50% Catch the Fire posts and 50% your own posts. This is a way that you can flesh out your content and it also helps you to like have a refresh because since the rebrand um, we've got new colors we've got new fonts so this is a way that you can refresh your entire social media feed with our new brand so that's it for this and I just want to affirm you guys that like if you've ever been overwhelmed by social media know that you are not alone in this um, you've got tons of resources on our brand website catchthefire.com there's lots of content there that you could just pull and repost um, and Joe Smith is here for all of your branding, all of your branding requests. And if you ever have specific social media questions, like the nitty gritty of how to post, uh, feel free to ask me as well. So uh, I'm gonna take a look at the questions now. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to type them in. So Lesha asks, hi, I will be designing t-shirts for the kids community volunteers. Do you have any tips? What logo I should be using stacked? Um, as well as what I should include on the t-shirts. Joe, do you want to chime in? Yeah, for sure. Um, so thank you for asking that question. So with a general brand question like this, you have artistic license when it becomes like a ministry within the church. Um, and so something like that, you can, I would suggest using the actual icon, the flame, and then you could have, you could have the actual logo. That's the flame with catch the fire. And then it could in a totally different font, that's more kid relevant. It could have children's ministry. It could have anything applicable to children. So really, if anything, as long as you've got a reference to catch the fire, whether it be just the icon logo or the icon with the words catch the fire, the, the ministry part, the children part, the essence of your design or theme, you might be having a theme that season for kids t-shirts, that is up to you. That's your creative artistic license. Um, and so hopefully that helps. Does that help, Leisha? Cool. Yeah. 
cool. And feel free as well to email me. What people tend to do as well is email me their final mock-up and just ask, is this okay, Joe? You know, what do you think? Feel free to do that. Um, I'm more than happy to, before you spend the monies and get things printed, um, feel free to. Cool. Does that help? Yes. Excellent. And actually, you're um, Ottawa, aren't you, Alicia? Yeah, so, that's right. Like anybody here who's done anything like that, feel free mm -hmm. to um, email Alicia um, at the Ottawa Church because if you've already done something along the lines of really love that. or anything that's product with the kids ministry, feel free to, or just even have a little peruse on people's websites that may have already started. Um, shaping their own kids ministry and then replicating that um, through signage even if it's not a t-shirt it could be something mm -hmm. that you can look at perfect thank you so much cool awesome so eric has a really good question is there a place we could download the catch the fire videos that are edited for instagram facebook something like duncan speaking of about vision or should we use them on the repost app so this is something that's kind of a work in progress because I'm also personally, when I see other churches doing things well, um, sometimes I'll just download it and grab it if it's a photo and I'll just tag them in it. Um, but videos um, like today, I just emailed CTF London asking for their videos because I really like them. Um, Joe, do you think it would be possible if there was like a shared folder off of CTF brand that because um, I've also collected resources from Raleigh. Um, now I've got the ones from London. Um, so just so you know, I'm like, I'm personally always collecting and trying to keep an eye on content. So this is something that I do too. Um, it would be great for us to have, uh, like I would love to be able to share that with you guys because I get that it's great um, when we can like cross promote the churches. Um, yeah, any thoughts, Joe? I think that'd be a great goal to aim towards. I would suggest for the time being, almost collect your own little portfolio of resources. And I love the proactiveness of that because really, you know, you're cross-pollinating at the end of the day, we're one big family. And actually by us sharing each other's content, that actually just endorses each other as being part of one big global family. Um, in terms of the how-to of that, I'd have to inquire. Um, and also the managing is the managing of management of that. So, um, but for now, I would definitely encourage you to be intentional in gathering your own. Um, and, and like, um, I would also definitely tag the church that you're sharing, um, sharing content from. Um, that definitely helps with the whole social media um, but I, I, I'll look into that. I think that's a great idea, having something where we've got a shared resource. Um, I just have to look into the how-to of that. Okay, cool. And just so, uh, for example, um, for those of you who came to Revival 25, we had a shared folder of photos um, that then we gave to like, some of the key influencers and staff and people who we knew would be posting. So there are times when we've got like um, collective campaigns and we'll create things to share. Um, so for now, definitely use the repost app. I also use it sometimes because it's a lot faster than trying to like find the person and find the clip. Um, so you have both options. I think you've also got to be aware that sometimes it's also the, the privacy or the who, whose content it is, just to be aware of asking for permission and, you know, just, just that open communication. Um, if, you know, that might not mean much to some people, but to other content, it might actually be just localized to that particular church. So just be sensitive to that. And maybe also pinging an email to ask for permission with certain ones if you are downloading. Um, because there's also as well, if we're not careful, if we're all using the same imagery, um, it, we might exhaust that same imagery and it's like oh my goodness that imagery is being used for kids ministry as well as um, a global event as well as a local event and before we know it we've exhausted that image that one image because we've all liked it um, so it 
there's a there's a big picture in all of this as well so i think i think resharing things is probably a best way for now while we grow into this cool does anyone else have any other questions thoughts was this helpful Hopefully this provides, um, to me, social media is like all of the last few branding coaching sessions coming together. Um, Cause if you think of the stuff with color and like now you can create graphics and you can use your graphics on social media. Um, so hopefully this helps you guys to just be even more empowered to know that you are capable of rolling out the Catch the Fire brand and that we're here to help. That's great. Thanks so much, Anita. Would you mind pulling up your slide, Anita? That's the naming convention. I just want to reiterate this because this may be new to some of you. Um, just to go over this because this would be an amazing action for you to take on in your department or your area or your church or influence the person who does social media in your um, church. Um, and so this will just, if, if we could all bring this action, um, um, it would be incredible um, to actually bring uniformity and consistency. So here we go. Um, and so this is just using Sydney as an example. Um, and the only time that you will see location next to the name Catch the Fire is on your social media accounts or your charity name, formal documents like your letterhead. So when we talk about our church, we're still gearing towards saying catch the fire church comma in sydney or catch the fire church location is not we're not known now as catch the fire location um, so when you talk about your church try and shift that language i'm a catch the fire church i just so happen to be in sydney and so um, the location part isn't part of your identity name. So, so the only time you'll see it is on your social media and website, um, anything digital really. Um, so when you write in the content, we don't want to put um, location. When you write the copy that goes with your post. Um, so just be aware of that. That's, that's one area. But if you can go through your social media now and actually rename your profile name and handle and same with your instagram as well so it's all consistent um, this would be wonderful to start seeing that you'd be surprised just even by doing that as well as changing your profile image to be um, to be the logo with the red uh, background um, would dramatically change um, social media already um, so that is definitely an action I would love for you to fulfill um, between now and our next brand coaching session. That would be amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah. Is there any, are there any questions at all that you would, okay, we've got another question coming up there. Yeah, that's a great, um, a great no, Anne. So um, it's really important. I think going back to my, my area of actually saying about asking for permission, you've got to be also really careful with minors, with children and vulnerable people. Um, and so actually it's, it's realizing that um, you have to have permission um, from adults or a policy in your church that actually gives permission when you enter these, um, I think the one that we have here in Toronto is by walking into um, these doors, you're giving permission for us to take photographs of you and use them. Um, and so we all have different policies, remembering that actually each country will have its own policy. So just be sensitive to children's and images um, that you see that you want to repost. I, if, I'd err on the side of caution and possibly not share the children's ones. That would be actually just from your own local church um, because of the permission and because of the, um, the privacy policy and things like that that are in place for different countries. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up, Anne. Um, good note. So be aware of, of that. Any other questions that you have? No. 
Well, you're doing amazing. It's lovely to see when you actually scroll through and you, you um, like the pages of the different social media pages. It's lovely to see all the logos in line, all the names in line. Um, it brings me joy when there's continuity and consistency. And, you know, what is so precious as well is the end of the day, we're here to inspire. We're here to inspire. Then we're here to inform. And I think that's just a little, little um, suggestion in, in all that you do. We want to inspire, then we want to inform, and then we want to call someone into some kind of action or engagement. Um, and if you can be purposeful and intentional with all the things that Anita suggested, then we are on to a winner. And um, so thank you. Thank you for your creative expertise and um, strategic minds in actually um, putting the content out there on social media. It, it looks gorgeous. Excellent. But if there are, like Anita said, feel free to email us both. For those that you know weren't able to make it to this session, this will be going up on ctfbrand.com in the article section. Um, and especially going through some of the detail of what Anita's presented, feel free to relook at it and um, and I'll be in touch for sure. And if not, feel free to email me. Excellent. Is that, is that good, Anita? Are we yeah, good? That's great. Great. Well, thank you again and have a great month. And we look forward to seeing you next month.